good uh, a good show to watch so far. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the endoserter, which people have been mentioning. Um, as a disclosure, I'm the medical director for Corneagen, and Corneagen makes the endoserter, so that's a a bias of mine. Um, the endoserter had um, got its FDA clearance in 2011, and I've been using it since then. I was using it before my association with um, Corneagen, and probably that's how I, one of the ways I got my association with Corneagen, I guess. Um, and it's and right now it's the most used device in the United States for um, for DSEC. Uh, and here's a picture of it um, over here on the on the right, uh, a top view and a bottom view. Um, and and uh, I'll just kind of go down this this uh, column over here and say some pluses and minuses about it. The, the biggest minus of it, of course, is that it's a single use device and it's expensive. And then I think really that's that's kind of the only minus of it. If it were cheap and you could use it more than once, I think probably everybody would be using it for everything. But um, it, it goes through uh, a relatively small uh, clear corneal incision. And if you look at the the picture on the right here, it has a it has a platform, and you you put the um, graft on the platform, and then the platform rolls the graft without folding it and pulls it back within a sheath. And then the platform keeps on retracting back so that the graft is just sitting inside that sheath. And then you take that sheath and put it into the eye. And then there's another dial on there that retracts the sheath back. So the, so the graft is kind of the least amount of manipulation of the graft possible so that the, it's the, um, once it's in the eye, it's the sheath that's coming back. You're never really pushing or pulling the graft. And then it's big advantage that it has over some of the other methods is that it has this coaxial irrigation. So you don't need a, anterior chamber maintainer. And again, because you're not pushing or pulling the graft into the eye, you don't need another hole to have a second instrument or forceps come in. I think, I think in general, um, less holes in your eye is a good thing. So, so there's, there's the least amount of extra ports that you can have in the eye when you're doing this. Um, because, the, because the chamber never goes flat, you, you don't need to constrict the pupil to protect the graft from, from uh, anterior chamber hardware or the IOL. Um, it's, a, it's a very stable chamber and that's, that's a, that coaxial irrigation is what, what gets us that. Um, just a, a video of what I was describing. Um, here you uh, pull the graft up onto that platform and then that platform's gonna, um, gonna roll the tissue. I'll get it back into the view here in a second. Let's see. You can have a you can have up to about a uh, eight and a half millimeter graft. It overlaps the edge a little bit. One one disadvantage of the endosur is if you like to do a really big graft, I don't think it works as well for that. Um, but it's it's scrolling up onto that platform, and then that platform is is pulling back into this uh, sheath. You know, there's lots of good studies out there that show that that the place where the endothelium is getting its most damage is when you're compressing it through the wound and the and having the graft totally enclosed inside this um, sheath protects it from the wound when you're inserting it um, because the because the graft is a little bit bigger than the platform you gotta you gotta tuck an edge and it sort of scrolls like a, a cinnamon roll in there not not folded they've also shown that creases in the graft causes a uh, endothelial cell loss at the crease and since it's a roll and not a fold um, that protects it. And then uh, um, inserting the device or here, it's, you know, it's got, it's got a bevel just like an IOL uh, injector would. So it goes in nicely through a, through a four millimeter um, clear corneal wound is what I like to use. And then a little bit counterintuitive, not not like an IOL injector. You you insert this uh, sheath all the way across the eye because it, when you when you do this other dial on there, it's going to pull the sheath back and the graft stays still. So so it looks like you're pushing it in. You're not. It's already in there, and the sheath is just retracting. And then the graft, because of the of the um, irrigation, usually just flips open by itself, and and it's ready for its air bubble. Which I, I stopped the video there. Um, and then and then. You know the where where I really think the endoserter shines is is the fact that that we know now that thinner desects do better than thicker desects and and um, 
And what some people have already mentioned is that the um, thinner D sets, especially these nano thin ones, um, have less rigidity than the than the thicker D sets. And and um, and with the endoserter, um, the the thin tissue behaves a lot like the thick tissue. I don't really have to alter my technique much at all when I use the endoserter. And I think with some of the other methods of insertion, the thin tissue is particularly um, uh, more difficult to um, insert at times just because of because it's uh, uh, less because it less less wants to spring open. So I, I really like having that endoserter for thin tissue. And the and the data on thin tissue now is is that at a year the visual acuities and um, approach that of DMAC. And so I think if you have a there there were there are people that are pushing the envelope on when they might do DMAC surgery. And I think DSEC still has a role for those because that thin tissue can get uh, real comparable results. The endoserter doesn't work very good for thick tissue.